most wonderful is love. A tender love, a dream of love to cling to, someone to sing to. This love I bring to you is ours to share. For everything that's wonderful is yours. This is only the beginning. Come on, cheer up. And I'll prove to you that every cloud has a silver lining. Let's go back about a hundred years ago, when a lot of folks, including my grandpa and grandma, started west. You know, if they hadn't made that trip, the Admiral's path and mine might never have crossed. Then, in 1876, General Custer made a stand. My grandpa stood alongside him. Well, for a little while, anyway. And if the Indians hadn't won that battle, Grandma would have gone back east, then the Admiral and I would never have tangled. San Francisco, 1906. Yes, sir, it's an ill wind that blows nobody good. It took an earthquake and a fire to keep my mother and dad in California, so that someday I might get to meet the Admiral. Comes 1917, and our boys shove off for France. I dab it along with them to fight the war to end all wars. Then comes victory, and they come back loaded with souvenirs and memories. Yes, sir, it was fate about the Admiral and I. Comes 1945, the big war is over, and the lady with the light says, welcome home to Uncle Sam's 10 million nephews. Welcome home stateside. Ten million homesick, happy G.I.s. My pals and I are among them. The shooting has stopped, but the shouting is still going on. We're home. Back to ration gas, synthetic rubber, and meat shortages. But it doesn't take long for the country to appear normal once more, from the East Coast to the West Coast. But it does take some of us servicemen a little longer to get readjusted. So, in recognition of this problem, our uncle organizes the 5220 Club, which means that a veteran can draw 20 bucks a week for 52 weeks. Sort of a basic training for civilian life. Well, the four of us are making our weekly call following our regular schedule, when into our lives comes trouble. Pardon me, little lady, but uh, you're on the wrong line. This line's for vets. Oh, are you a horse doctor? <laughs> Bum. Social Security for unemployed comics is right over there. I was an ensign in the waves. Oh, well, well, brass, brass. Uh-uh. Sorry, Admiral. No smoking in here. Oh, you police the area, too. That's right, that's right. And uh, you're holding up the line. Next. Jane Madison. You won't be seeing me anymore. I'm leaving town. You worked in the past seven days? No. You refused employment? No. Able and available? Yes. Fine, yes. What? You're a duffel bag, Admiral. Or is it Mr. in the Navy? It's Miss. As in hit or miss. <laughs> now, Jimmy Stevens. Hi, Ethel. Hi. Well, I've been worried about you. Now yeah, why? I was afraid you might have been trapped into getting a job. We oh, know. <laughs> is your company still intact? All present accounted for. Front and center men. Oops. Eddie Hart. How's it going, Eddie? Swell, Ethel. I'll have a Benelli, and I ain't working Yes, about I'm it. sure you haven't, Ollie. Michael O'Hallahan. Well, he tells me you're Irish. <laughs> well, have you worked in the past seven days? No. Nope. Nope. Have you refused employment? No. Nope. Able and available? We're trying, Ethel. Exhibit A, Eddie. Look at this classified ad. At liberty. Combat crew. Four specialists. Eager and willing to drop bombs. Bright box 109. Give references. Do you mean to say no one's answered that? Nope. Haven't had a nibble in three months. I just can't understand it. So, uh, make with the checks, Ethel. Well, there's one question I have to ask you first. Huh? Huh? Yeah, what's what's this? Something new? Will all four of you marry me? Oh, Ethel, you're a sense. Just name the day, baby. See you next week. Yeah. I'll see you later. Hey, hey, don't forget those. Bye. Bye. Hello? Hey, hey. Uh-uh. 
several of them. This time you're really in the wrong line. Why? It says they cash checks. But they bleed you for 10 cents. Jimmy can save you that dime. I'm in a hurry. I have to make an important phone call. Which brings the cost of your phone call to 15 cents. 10 cents to get the nickel, and a nickel for the nickel to call. Of course, if you're so rich. Of course I'm not, but any place to charge you for service. Oh, no. Jimmy's got an angle. Yeah, that's fun, too. Well, I suppose they pay you for the honor of cashing your check. That's right. A big round quarter for each check. This I want to see. Paulie, come on. Serving you, my good man. My name is Jean. Don't Lester. tell me I still have your own signature cards and you're opening four new accounts with $20 checks. Five new accounts. Five? What are you doing? Recruiting? Now, if you'll just fill out your personal history for the First National's information. <laughs> and yours. And mine. Name? Jean Madison. Age? <laughs> Sex? Female. Hmm. Neither single? Single. Engaged. Wow. A genuine diamond. And you was worrying about a dime. No, I wasn't. He was. And besides, Henry's ring doesn't represent money to me. Henry, huh? Mm-hmm. We're going to be married. Uh-huh. It figures. Your checks, please, and we will avoid the usual bookkeeping. There we are. And Ro? Oh, wait a minute. Where are the piggy banks that go with the new accounts? What's the First National trying to do? Yeah. Cheetah? Sure. Come on. Look at the signs, sir. That's better. Five of them. That's it. Oh, oh, excuse me. You wouldn't want this one. The paint is microscopically scratched. Oh, there's another one. That's better. And now you'll want to close your accounts, I presume. Nice presuming. Five twenties will do it. Do you mind if they wrinkle this time? No, no, not at all. Thank you. Admiral. <laughs> Thank you and good morning. Come on. Wait a minute. Where's the 25 cent dividend? Oh, Jesus. patience, Admiral. Patience. Come on. Uh, but I still need a nickel for the phone call. Now, why spend a nickel for a phone call? I can get it for your wholesale. Oh. Hiya, Benny. How are you? Benny. Benny. What's up, yeah. I've been waiting for you. I sold out last week's bags already yesterday. Look, nothing. Well, you're in business again. Five today. Five quarters, my benign friend. Five? That's what you call it, please. No, no, it's, uh, shall we say, an unusual day, Benny. And it's an unusual demand you've filled up for pigs with the neighborhood kids. Yeah. Nothing but banks they want all of a sudden. How do you do it? Oh, I just tell them if they work hard and save their money, they'll grow up and retire and live like us. Oh, what a philosophy this man lives by. Yeah, ain't he terrific? I must say you're ambitious. You think so? Uh, most men would accept their $20 a week and relax, but not you. <laughs> you go out and make another quarter. And one for you. Uh, I still need a nickel for the phone. Uh-uh. You know, you'd like cigars with dollar bills if I'd let you. Benny, mm -hmm. um... Socrates once said, he is not only idle who does nothing, he is also idle who might be better employed. I ain't idle all day, I ain't idle. No, no, but your phone is. Do you realize, Benny, that somewhere someone is waiting for their phone to ring? They sit and wait and wait and nothing happens. Just silence. And there's your phone sitting there, idle. Never thought of it that way. Well, come on, let's spread some happiness around. Oh, but I wouldn't want to employ No, that. go ahead, lady, please. We got to spread joy. But no long distance joy. Keep the joy local. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, do you mind? Oh, it's quite all right. Benny, Benny, she means she'd like some privacy. Come on. Oh. Well, hello, is it Mr. Marlowe's secretary? Well, yes, it's me again. I'm sorry to bother you, but... Well, I had to check out of the Carton Hotel today, and I'll, I'll have to go back to Walla Walla unless I... Poor kid's broke. What? You say you've heard from Henry? Well, isn't it wonderful they've heard from Henry? Well, it's a small world. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me. I was just talking to some crazy people who've been wonderful to me. Oh, where did Henry... I mean, Mr. Mala said he wanted me to meet him. What? A 
Oh, there must be some mistake. Oh. But uh, I've been waiting here for him for two weeks. Well, didn't he even ask about me? Didn't he even mention my name? Oh, didn't he even say where he is? Stood up, huh? Yeah. Jimmy, there's no joy there. Maybe she got the wrong number. When he does get back, tell him I've gone to Walla Walla. Of course they have telephones in Walla Walla. <coughs> The daughter's crying. Okay, it's kind of tough when you're in love and things go wrong. Gee, it does something to me when I see a girl cry. I'd like to get my hands on that dirty stinker just once. What kind of a guy is brush off a nice kid like that? Here she comes. Holly, get the limousine and pick us up. Roger. Excuse me. Boys, it's been very kind. Thanks a lot. Bye. Look, is it all right if I find this Henry character and muss him up just a little bit, huh? Oh, then you won't hurt. We couldn't help listening in. Oh, that's all right. You mustn't think I'm upset. Just... Sure, we understand. Look, we'll drop you off at the airport, the depot, or, uh, or the camel barns, whichever way you get to Walla Walla. Well, it's the bus station, but my bus doesn't even go five o'clock. Not so far. Hey, she can spend the rest of the day with us. Watch us work. Why not? Right. Work? Are you drawing money from the government because you're not working? Oh, we wouldn't work for money. No, that would not be legal. We're working out the payment on this. Come on, how about it? Well, they need to be one. Sure, sure. We do. Hey, here comes our limousine. Taxi, taxi, mister. Allow me. That belongs to you? No, no, we just use it to get around to our appointment. Let him in the takeoff. Right, go, man. Up you go. Contact, darling. That song for a long time. Yeah. I guess you made him take a Lois. Lois? Yeah, the girl that he's in love with. Oh, he's in love too. Yeah, but she don't even know he's alive. You see what we Stop tried. writing a book, Mike. Hey, Admiral, tell us about Henry. Where'd you meet him? Pearl Harbor. Army and Navy. U.S. Army. Go. 